sending the X-ray from anterior to posterior. It is transversing all these lines. So once you see, yes, you are going to see this way. Understood? So in case of now, the X-ray will be what? The view means X-ray went this way, and the film came like this, and you are going to see it what from posterior only. Clear? Yes or no? So once you see over here, what will be more near to you? It will be spinous process. Understood? Clear? It came from that side. Now more near one will be spinous process to you. Then it will be what? Lamina, transverse process, and all other things will be overlapping for you. Why it will be overlapping? Because actually this is lying further. So the body we showed in rectangular surface is actually the most tender one. But it is overlapping. Yes? Now you can see we are seeing from here. So the most nearest thing for you right now will be spinal process. After that, yes, lamina. From lamina it will be transverse process. Yes? You can see what? Superior articular surface. Yes? And you can see what? Here too it will be very good. Then body. So you can see if you see the color, the body is little lighter because it is coming from here. Yes? So they all are overlapped. So clear? Yes? So now you can see, it is going this way. So this is the last one, spinous process is going to be the first one. Yes? So this, you look something like this. Because we are getting an x-ray, so most nearest thing for you will be what? One to take. It will be spinous process. Lamina, inferior articular process. Yes? Transverse, superior articular process. After that there will be two rounds over here. What's there? They are pericular. After that there will be body. But all of them will be overlapped. Yes? Because they are all of them at one line. Understood? And if you see two con connections between both of them, which we have already seen also this one. Yes? So in between two vertebrae, there will be what? Intervertebral disc. Now you will be seeing what? Clear? Yeah. Now you can see this. It's a spine. Yes? So AP projection, now you can see we are seeing from posterior. So the lower part you can find 12th rib. Yes, 12th rib is attaching to T12. Yes, below this L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And you can see, but once you connect these two lines, we call it Tuffier line, it is connecting L4. Yes, we use this. Above this you calculate, and here we put needle for lumbar function. Clear? Now it is easy to understand for you. So, once you take a bind, <coughs> so you can see where the lower, the, this part is what you can see, this one, 12th rib. Where it is attaching, then you can understand this is T12. Understood? When this, both of them you connect, wherever it is crossing, this will be L4. Below this it will be L5. This is S1. Understood? This is sacral. What you can see over here, what, what is connected? This is sacrum. And they also overlap. You should know. It comes like this and it will be attached. So, sacrum, ileum. This is sacral ileum joint. Yeah? Now you can see what, what pathologies you can see over here. <coughs> I'll explain you a little bit. Yes? Now it is side view. So if you take side view with this body, yes, it will be, here it will be intervertebral disc. And I, I explained your space over here. We call it what? Intervertebral foramen. Intervertebral foramen will be bound anteriorly by what? A part of body, intervertebral disc, another one part of body, two pedicles, and it will be covered by a little bit of lamina, and this, there will be what? A joint, we call it what facet joints. Clear? Then we can see over okay. here. So, lower part of body, this upper part of body, behind this, what is there? These two are pedicles. Yes? And it is connected what? It is connected through what? So, this is the lower facet and this is the upper facet. Yes? And the starting of lamina will come over here. The starting of lamina below this. Yes? So if you see this is bound, it is a closed space. Through what is coming? Spinal nerve starts coming. Yeah, so spinal nerve will start from spinal cord, they will ex exit through this hole. We call it what? Intervertebral foramen. So it should be quiet but bigger and it should not be bound by acute border. So you can see this quiet ground. Understood? So anteriorly, what? Whatever it is, this part of body, pedicles, yes? And the joints, we call it what? Yes. A facet joint and starting of what? Little, we can find what? 
let us start in your laminar will be over there that is very less yes so it is a bound space you can find over here now you can see this is lateral x-ray yes body yes intervertebral disc yes two pedicles yes and you can see over here there are what joint with face and joint yes and here you find this phenomenon and as you know that radio opaque means what it is blocking x-ray so at the level of body and the bones you will be getting whitish color compared to the soft tissue so you cannot find anything over here but there is what intervertebral disc nerves cannot be found over here yes a better one i'll show you this way <coughs> now you can find yes yeah. so body and you can i already explained you can see what we call it was ambiguous eminence means because of what we are taking our body weight it is little bit pressed so you cannot see in like anterior posterior projection but lateral projection you can see what it is little bit notched not too much yes but once there is what avascular necrosis what when it happens i gave you one example sickle cell anemia avascular necrosis will come and it will collapse and it will show you what appearance fish mouth appearance last time i explained yes so now you can see it is little bit so we call it what ambiguous eminence now in between these you will be finding intervertebral disc now you come behind this is what this is pedicle superior articular process transverse process inferior articular process what is this lamina you can see it is lamina understood so this is l5 it will be crossed by what this is from here what is crossing this is iliac crest so this is the one lip medial lip and lateral lip clear understood now you can see in between it is looking like a gap which is open not open why it is closed here by intervertebral this so you can see what is blocked anteriorly what will be the wall for this foramen body and intervertebral disc up and now it is pedicle posterior you can find it is articular process which is forming what joint over here face and joint clear if you see little bit you, you will get a little part of lamina might come posterior understood clear so here what is exist, uh, exiting from here is spinal nerve so i told you it is a closed space in old day there might be degeneration of probably the joints or degeneration of bones which will lead to a osteophyte formation so we can told you probably there is one osteophyte over here there is one osteophyte over here it is going to press this nerve so in in for example one this this foramen is called what intervertebral foramen it is becoming smaller it will lead to pressure on spinal nerve especially at the level of the call it what lumbosacral plexus this pressure will lead to the disease which i call for the syndrome sciatica yes sciatica so sciat sciatica is usually what it is normally it is idiopathic but it is because most commonly it is because of pressure on sciatic nerve that's why we call it as sciatic so these people will have a back pain and leg pain and i told you you can put these people on orthopedic bed and you try to flex their what hip joint what you try to flex is because you are stretching what sciatic nerve it will lead to more pain so you can understand the severity of sciatica if you take x ray yes you can find if you find osteophyte then you can understand what it is what pinching imprinting on this sciatic nerve yes sometimes we just told you what either degenerative changes of this disc lead to what prolapse of this because in middle what is there so this is this because of degenerative changes this in, inside part is called what nucleus for both this will push over here outside so the space is limited once it is pushing over here it is going to press again on the nerve so if it is not that severe you will get similar pain either here or if it will come in the cervical region you will get pain in the arm yes lower cervical region you call it what brachial plexus region arm but if it is very severe pressing it can cause paralysis it can cause paralysis prolapse sometimes in trauma this disc can slip also because it will push this way disc will slip posteriorly again it will press yes but once you talk about prolapse of disc or the slip disc it is going to press directly on where 
on spinal cords. Yes. So according to what level it is pressing, starting it might be what, on the side it is pressing also nerve. First it will be pain. Later on it might be what if it is very severe it will lead to first paralysis. But keep it in mind you cannot find signs of sleep disc very easily or prolapse easily from X-ray. X-ray will not show anything because it is what this is soft tissue. You are already getting a gap. What you can find over here? If it is moved. Yes, which I already told you, what? Spondylolisthesis, you can find. Because it will be moved, one vertebra will be moved on another vertebra. In this call, we call it spondylolisthesis. Spondylolysis, you can see what Scotty dog appearance in oblique view. That is fine. But prolapse, you cannot find. In this case, we go for what? MRI. So, MRI is best for showing soft tissue. So, it will be cutting in lines and it will show, okay, this line you have prolapsed. So this is clear.